Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. Uh, as you guys probably know, and if you watch the news, or if, even if you live under a rock, you probably know the the stuff has hit the fan. Uh, SHTF is kind of going on right now. Hopefully, it doesn't get worse. But if it does, I wanted to kind of get with some of you guys that may have got caught, you know, with your pants down, or uh, maybe you don't have enough supplies. You don't really know what to do or where to start. So. We're gonna run through this as quickly as we can, but number one, number one thing you're gonna need in any survival situation is always gonna be water. Number one thing, you gotta have it, gotta have it. We're not gonna talk about why, you can look at other videos. I've done other videos on water, you can go check that out. Uh, make sure you have enough stored in containers in the event the power or water stops flowing. So if you're relying on the city water supply or something like that, uh, you ought to probably get some containers and fill them up in the event that you need that for drinking water later on. Uh, if the power goes off or something like that. Uh, recycle and wash your used two liter and gallon jugs. That's something my wife and I have been doing for years. Uh, instead of just throwing them straight in the trash or the recycle bin, clean them out a little bit. You can use a little bleach or a little soap and water and clean them out. You don't, a lot of times you don't even have to if you get them quick enough. So clean those out, those jugs. Milk jugs are a little harder. You got to actually clean them out pretty darn good because you don't want, you know, gross milk in there mixed with your water. So just make sure you rinse them out real well, you'll be fine. Uh, for more storage, if you have the space for it, look for some IBC totes and 55 gallon plastic barrels. You can find those big blue ones sometimes for fairly cheap. Of course, they may be hard to come by now. Uh, make sure they're new or at least no harmful or pungent chemicals were stored inside. A lot of times you can find some with uh, like soy sauce and stuff like that in them, the big IBC totes. Uh, those are safe to use because soy sauce is a human food product. But the problem is, is that if you're using that for drinking water, it's always going to taste like soy sauce. Now, if you're in survival times, you're probably not going to care about that too much. But uh, if you can find one that hadn't had soy sauce in it or something like that, you know, some, you don't want anything with anything harmful to humans mainly. That's the main thing. Even if it tastes a little bad, uh, you know, like smoke flavor. I've heard that's another one that's real hard is uh, the smoke flavor that these restaurants use for barbecuing and stuff like that. Supposedly that sticks to the insides of those uh, IBC totes. Uh, also on the water, if, if uh, these containers like IBC totes or your uh, blue barrels are left in the sun, uh, they'll, they'll quickly algae up in like a week or two. You'll have algae in the stuff. So if you're going to do it that way, uh, the best thing to do is put it under a cover or figure out a way to paint the thing or make the container to where the sun can't get to the water and that will help slow the algae down from growing. But you still may have to add like a little bit of bleach and I don't know what the formula is on that. Just, you know, I don't know, a tablespoon per gallon or something like that. I'm not sure what it would be, but you're, you would have to treat that water somehow or otherwise you're going to have algae infested water that you're going to have to treat before you can consume. So consider that before you store any water like that, large amounts. Also, you need to have the knowledge and the supplies necessary for water treatment. So again, bleach, iodine, there's some other ways. We're not going to go over all of that stuff. There's also some uh, uh, water straw filters you can use for emergency situations. So have that on hand. Uh, Another thing next up in the in the list here is number two is food. You want to stock up on non-perishable foods now. Like uh, time's running out, man. I mean, the hourglass has been tipped over. So there's a finite amount of stuff. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, there's plenty, there's plenty. But, you know, if people slow down production, then obviously that's going to slow down everything. And I think that there's kind of a chain reaction going on right now in the grocery store. So they probably do still have plenty for now, but it's not too late at this point, but you may be limited on finding some of these things I'm fixing a list. So here's some great examples of things that are good for long-term storage. Beans, like dry beans, rice, dry rice, uh, you know, largest the largest bags you can get. Uh, flour, salt, sugar, honey, canned meats, and canned vegetables are just to name a few. Uh, anything else you can get in cans or that have, uh, you know, a really long shelf life. Other things like you know, obviously stock your fridge up as much as you can beforehand. But, you know, around here in my area, hamburger meat's getting to be short supply. People are kind of freaking out and buying as much as they can every time they see it. So you may not get stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, freeze up as much as you can, load up everything you can. Uh, you know, imagine that you might not be able to go to the store next month. I'm assuming that you will be able to, but what if you couldn't? You know, so, so prep, prep like that. Uh, next up on the food category is just eat less. Uh, and I'm talking to myself too, so don't think that I'm exempt from this. Uh, we've already done some stuff, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, many of us, even myself, could stand to lose a few pounds. 
uh, let's use this as an opportunity to get in better shape. Uh, and right now, my wife and I, we're on what we're calling the plague diet. And it consists of basically reducing your food uh, consumption by 33% and always eating leftovers uh, the next day or whatever. If we make enough where we have leftovers, we're not letting anything go to waste now. These are not times to let things go to waste. Uh, so, uh, you know, eat less, uh, try to be, stay active during all this stuff. Uh, you know, and there's a misconception. I'm hearing a lot of people say that they, have, they feel like they have to stay inside. That's not true at all. You just need to practice social distancing and stay away from people. So you should get outside. Vitamin D is excellent to fight off all kinds of stuff. So uh, next up, we're going to talk about fuel. Uh, buy as much as you can safely store. I mean, fill up every tank you have. Uh, I've, uh, I've got the Suburban. It holds over 40 gallons. I've filled it up. I filled up my black Chevy truck. I feel I'm filling up every single gas tank that I have on my property, which if you guys follow the channel, you know, that's quite a few gas gas tanks, right? I figure right now I've got around hundred gallons of gas between what I've got in my suburban, my black Chevy, my wife's car and my gas cans. And the reason you want this gas is because man, you're never going to get gas cheaper than this. This is it. Uh, in our life, it might still drop some more, but you know, uh, in my area right now, it's like a buck fifty, a buck sixty maybe for uh, for regular gas. And if you want premium, you can get that well under two dollars a gallon right now. And I just don't think you're ever going to see gasoline prices this low again. So if this all you know snaps back really quickly here in a couple of months, when you're trying to figure out what to do with all that gasoline uh, and gas prices are back to normal prices, then you'll be happy that you had that stuff. That's the way I look at a lot of this stuff. Only buy things that you're going to consume anyways. And then make sure to consume them within the uh, allotted time, you know, and, and, and on canned goods, don't worry about the date so much. The date doesn't really matter. There's many, many videos that talk more and go into more depth about food storage, but uh, the, it's really just a CYA for the uh, vegetable canner. You know, they have to put that on there because otherwise, you know, people could get sick and stuff. What you want to watch out for, obviously, is dented cans. Uh, you want to watch, you know, when you're buying cans, don't buy dented cans and make sure they're not swollen up. If the lid and the top and the bottom looks like it's swollen up, uh, I believe it's botulism that you can get from eating vegetables that have kind of gone bad inside the can. So you don't want that because that can definitely kill you. Uh, so be careful about all this stuff, you know, learn about it. And I, if you haven't seen the video, I actually, a while back, I did a video on a book that you need to have for when the SHTF happens. And I'll link it over here or down there or maybe down there in the doobly-doo. I don't know where I'll put it, but somewhere you'll be able to link to that video. Watch this one first because if you're, if you're this far in, you need this. So buy all the fuel you can. In an emergency, you could siphon that fuel out of one of those vehicles to run a generator, for example, or your lawnmower or whatever, you know, whatever you need to run. So have that on hand. I'm trying to burn through this fast so we don't have to have a long video here. Uh, personal hygiene, number four. Stock up on Dio, man. You're going to need it. You're going to be working harder than you're used to, uh, especially when we get to this next stuff. Uh, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, feminine products for the ladies out there and for your wives and stuff. Make sure they have months worth of that stuff, you know, a year's worth if you can afford it. Uh, TP for your bunghole. I mean, that's pretty obvious. You need TP for your bunghole, but you don't have to go out and fight people for it. And if it comes down to that, you know, trust me, there's a million different ways, maybe not a million, but there's at least 15 different ways that one can take care of that business without toilet paper. Leaves, uh, you know, I mean, old cloth. You know, my wife and I, when we're getting ready to throw a shirt out that you know how the shirts disintegrate up here when they've been through the washer too many times. Well, we'll take that shirt, rip it up into shreds and put it in what we call the rag bag. And it's not for wiping our butts normally. We normally use it for like cleaning counters and stuff like that. Something we can just throw away when we're done. It's the one way of recycling stuff that we do, you know, to help help keep us from having to use so many paper towels and such. Well, now we could use that rag bag. You know, you, you, you smell what I'm stepping in. So use your brain. Toilet paper is not the most important thing. Water and food is the most important thing in this whole deal we're going through. So make sure that that's your top two priorities. I'm telling you this in this order for a reason. So, uh, of course, you know, as far as personal hygiene, you're not going to be doing as much. You're just, some of you, some of you will, but some of you are just going to be you laying around and stuff. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be going back and forth, getting my garden going, 
uh, we're going to be getting some chickens in here. I wasn't planning on doing that, but man, times are a changing and I want to be prepared for anything. So, uh, some of you guys aren't going to have to shower every day. That's the point of it. You can save on supplies that way. Another thing you can do is shave your head. I do this every year in the summertime. And you know, also it's, it's a super cool look obviously, but I do it for a couple of reasons. I go off grid and when I'm out off grid, I don't always have access to running water and therefore I have to take what I call a bucket bath a lot of times. And we have other different names for it that I won't say here, but anyways, when you have short hair like this, a lot of times you don't even have to use shampoo, but if you do, you just have to use like a pea size amount and you can get your whole head washed and you'll be totally clean. But if you got long hippie hair, you're going to be a dirty hippie, so don't be that way. Uh, next up, number five, lead and brass. Hopefully that goes without saying. Hopefully you've already got that taken care of because you're really going to have a hard time finding that now from what I'm hearing. Uh, hopefully you already have some of that in your, in your safe in there and it's ready to go. If not, I don't know. Go hit everywhere, and if you're, if you're set up for it, uh, for reloading, you better get after it. This is the time that you shine right here, man. I wish I was completely set up for that, but I'm not. I've got a lot of the components, but not everything I need. So, so next up in the list is going to be number six. And some of you might wonder uh, how this is a necessity, but trust me, it is when you're spending large amounts of time uh, doing things in a lot different way and spending time around the house, you're going to want home entertainment. So you probably already have some of this stuff, movies and different things that you've that you've saved up and you know your favorite stuff you can watch that books you know i encourage you to read those books that you haven't you know you've been putting off because you haven't had time to do it do a lot of that kind of stuff you know uh youtube of course you know check out the hands-on channel we got a ton of videos on here already i've been putting them up uh for a couple of years now so we've got quite a collection feel free to check them out go check out other prepper channels and stuff like that news of course but try to <laughs> try to get good news that's the hard part now uh, that kind of stuff's just going to keep you from going stir crazy. And, you know, most of us aren't used to being isolated. That's what I'm getting at. So be prepared for that. Uh, that's going to be tough for you. Maybe some of you to embrace that, especially people that are real extroverted, you know, that's going to be a real problem for you. If you're already an introverted person, you know, and you don't socialize a whole lot, then this is probably just another walk, you know, another day, another, another day in the park here for you. So no problem. But anyways, uh, embrace it get to know yourself it's a good time to do that if you don't know yourself very well get to know yourself maybe you've changed maybe you need to you know update and get to know yourself a little better better get to know your spouse uh, get to know your children better those are all great things spend more time as a family unit uh, it'll be great play games make music you know play guitar whatever you do play harmonica if you've, if you've got one sitting in the closet in there you've never pulled out it's time to pull it out start learning that stuff you know uh, disconnect from the social media and the constant barrage of whether it be local or national news. There's only one topic going on right now, and we need a break from that. Our minds need to recharge and get away from that. So try to find things that are not stressful to do and fun, you know, where you can get out there and get a sweat on, get a workout going. All of that stuff's going to help you out. And remember to have some fun during all this stuff. I mean, it's not really a vacation because. We don't know how long this thing's going to be or how bad it's going to be or any of that stuff, you know, and, and I advise you stay home. That's the best thing you can do. If you, if you can, if you can do it, stay home. So, uh, come off of here. Okay. Good time to catch up with family and friends, you know, have a long uh, phone conversation with them, call them up out of the blue. Somebody you hadn't talked to in years and just, you know, talk to them for an hour or two or whatever you got to, to spare there. Last thing here on the list is seeds. And this is a real important one. I should have maybe put it up a little higher on the list, but seeds, hopefully you guys already have them. Uh, it's time to, you know, bring back the, uh, world war two attitude towards getting out of hard times like this. And one of those things was they called it a victory garden, plant a victory garden. We're going to get through this. We're going to be victorious. So you might as well plant a garden. If you've never had time for a garden, now you do. 
I mean, it's that simple. You might as well do it. Uh, if you can get to your local, if, you're, if your state's not shut down yet, maybe you can still get out to a greenhouse and get some plants and stuff, you know, just practice your social distancing. And although a lot of people looked at me funny today, I had to go out to go to tractor supply and I was actually looking for chickens. I couldn't find any. And when I went in, I didn't have it pulled up, but I had my bandana on the ready in case I had to be going near some people. Cause you know how it is. Sometimes you walk down aisles and you know, Hey, look, I'm not saying you're whatever a Jeremy or a gross person, but if I have to get too close to you, I'm going to put that thing on. Cause I don't want this stuff. You know, I don't need it. Uh, so anyways, plant that garden get it going it can be fun and rewarding uh it's just one of those things that's it's until you do it you're never going to know what i'm talking about but once you see that that thing grow that tomato plant let's say and you get to uh watch those things come to full fruit and everything and the next thing you know they're red and they're ready to be eaten and they're so delicious because they're natural and organic and you grew them yourself that's the most important thing uh, you know yeah you do have to water them yeah you have to pull the weeds and stuff like that but you're going to need something to do to keep you keep you going through this especially if this lasts for a long time and i'm assuming I, I, you know i don't know if it will or not but it could so if it does i want you to be prepared for all this stuff there are many gardening channels on YouTube to explore. I'm not going to really go too much into that because it's really kind of regional. It depends on where you are. And, you know, if you're in the high Rocky Mountains, it's going to be a lot different than it is in the, in the, you know, panhandle of Texas or something, let's say. So that's going to be a whole different uh, gardening environment. So you're going to need to adjust accordingly. You never know, man. This stuff might save your life. I've been telling people about this for a long time. A lot of people thought, what are you doing? Why are you doing all that prepping? I remember, I remember back in 2006 or so, I was working with a group of guys and several of them were like, what do you mean? And I'd tell them, hey, you know, stock up, you know, for a rainy day and whatever. And they didn't understand that. And maybe the reason that I do is because I grew up around a lot of older people, you know, the older generations, and I listened to them when I was a young guy, and I, and I still do. I've, I've just always had kind of, uh, my, my friends have always been older than me for the most part. I'm usually the youngest guy around. It's because I respect elderly people, and I know they've got a lot of knowledge to give you. So it's time, man. Call up your grandparents, your dad, whatever, and say, hey, uh, you, you got any advice for me? Because uh, stuff could be getting real here. And if it does... I want you guys to be safe and remember the constitution is the supreme law of the land. Don't forget it. It's really important, especially in these times when uh, a lot of the different political things that they're working on, uh, at least to me, they all smell like socialism and I ain't digging it. So uh, we're kind of digging in here and staying away from people, social distancing and all that stuff as long as we possibly can. Uh, I haven't had to close my business yet, but I expect any day now the state's gonna gonna make us shut down uh, any business that's not a considered a you know a essential service. So anyhow, guys, uh, let's all try to help each other through this because we got some hard times coming, and I hope that you or we could have you know I can't see the future. You can't either, and none of these people on TV or on the news can either. So just remember that none of us know this may come and go and. And the worst case scenario, you know, worst case scenario with all this, you end up with a bunch of extra food that you didn't end up needing and you end up using it over the next year or two. And then you don't have to buy as much food when you go to the grocery store and such. So, you know, maybe you end up donating some of that to the canned food bank because you thought, you know, I might eat this canned spinach if I get desperate enough, but you never have gotten that desperate. So, the, you know, you donate that to somebody else or whatever that, that could use that that is desperate. Or maybe trade. That's another thing. If you've got a uh, a room full or a closet full of canned goods, and it's long enough, then there might be a possibility that you know you could do some trading with one of your neighbors or some of your friends. You know, stuff like that. One of the impor most important things about all this is, uh, you know, your family. Man, you're going to need and your friends. You're going to need to kind of have a plan and talk to them and start working it out. That if everything goes awry, that you guys can count on each other. Uh, I would much, I feel much more comfortable myself counting on my family and my friends than the federal government. So anyways, guys, that's all for today. Stay safe out there, stay prepared. And until then, we'll see you next time.